Now for this problem, we have a potential that looks something like this, and we can represent this potential graphically. So we have the x-axis and the vertical axis, v of x. And then for this potential, within the region negative to positive a, the potential takes on the value positive v naught, and everywhere else it's just zero. So what we want to do in this video is to find the transmission coefficient for a particle in such a situation. And we can actually divide this scenario into three different cases. So we have the scenario where the energy is smaller than v naught, the energy is equal to v naught, and when the energy is larger than v naught. So we're going to start by focusing on the first scenario. We're going to focus on the case where the energy level is somewhere below v naught, and it has to be larger than zero because if the energy level is smaller than zero, then this wave function that you're going to get in the end will not be normalizable. So the energy level must be larger than the minimum of the potential. And in this case, the minimum is zero. So our energy level is actually squeezed in between zero and v naught. And so we're going to try to solve the Schrodinger equation for this case. So now what we want to do is to solve the time independent Schrodinger equation to get our xi of x. And our xi of x is going to look something like this. It's going to be split into three different regions. The region where x is smaller than negative a, the region where x is between negative and positive a, and the region where x is larger than a. And we're going to s solve the time independent Schrodinger equation for these three regions, and then we're going to get three separate expressions. And that's what we're going to find in this video. So let's start off with the region where x is smaller than negative a. So for the region where x is smaller than negative a, you can see that the time independent Schrodinger equation is going to look something like this. And that's because within this region, when x is smaller than negative a, the potential is just zero. So the potential term just vanishes. So the plus v term, this term just vanishes because v is just equal to zero. And you can see that within this region, when x is smaller than negative a, the solution is going to be the same as the solution when x is larger than a, because in both of these regions, the potential is just zero. So actually, this equation applies for the region where x is smaller than negative a and the region where x is larger than a. So right now, we're looking for these two expressions here. So we're left with a differential equation that looks something like this. So we have negative 2me divided by h bar square times xi. And then we're, we're going to let the symbol k to be equal to the square root of 2me divided by h bar. And so this expression just becomes negative k squared times xi. And at this point, you should be familiar with a differential equation that looks something like this. This is just uh, the differential equation you get for simple harmonic motion. And so xi of x is just equal to some constant times e to the power of ikx plus b times e to the power of negative ikx. So assume that at this point you're familiar with this solution to, for this differential equation, so I'll, I won't explain where you get this from. So for the region where x is smaller than negative a, we get this expression. So we can now go back to this. So when x is smaller than negative a, we have a times e to the power of ikx plus b times e to the power of negative ikx, where k is equal to the square root of 2me divided by h bar. And as I've stated before, uh, the same equation also applies for the region x is larger than a. And so for that region, we also get a similar xi of x. So this time we also have a constant. This time I'll choose a different symbol. Let's call it f. So f times e to the power of ikx plus g times e to the power of negative ikx. And now this expression will be for the region where x is larger than a. And so we can fill this in as well. So we have f times e to the power of ikx plus g times e to the power of negative ikx. And so now we're left with this expression, which is what we will try to solve next. Now for the region where x is between negative and positive a, you can see that the potential is equal to positive v naught. And so that's why our time independent Schrodinger equation is going to look something like this. So we have v naught times xi of x, and this is equal to e times xi of x. And then now I can remove this term and place it on the right hand side. So we have e minus v naught times xi. And then I'm going to dump these constants over to the other side as well. And so we have d squared xi dx squared. 
And don't forget, right now we're focusing on the scenario where e is smaller than v0. So e is smaller than v0. So for this case, e minus v0, this is a negative number because e is smaller than v0. So I can just absorb this negative sign inside this expression, inside the bracket, and then we will get something like v0 minus e. And so this expression here is positive because v0 is larger than e. And so now I'm going to define another symbol. So let's say L is equal to the square root of 2m v0 minus e divided by h bar. And so now this expression becomes L squared times xi. And so once again, we get a differential equation. And once again, I'll assume you're familiar with differential equations that look like this. And so the solution xi of x is just equal to some constant, let's call it c, times e to the power of lx plus d times e to the power of negative lx. And this solution is applicable for the region x is between negative and positive a. And so now we can fill this in as well. So xi of x for within this region is just equal to c times e to the power of lx plus d times e to the power of negative lx, where l is equal to the square root of 2m v0 minus e divided by h bar. And so there you have it. So this is a preliminary result. We'll try to use what we have right here to derive the transmission coefficients. And we will do that by exploiting the continuity uh, uh, conditions for xi of x, and which is what we will do in the next video. So for this video, I'm just going to focus on how we can obtain this expression.